Hey everybody, welcome back to my workshop. So yesterday I painted my horizontal stabilizer. I'm waiting for that to dry. Uh, there's really nothing else I have to do with it. It's pretty much done. Um, so what I'm doing now today is I'm working on my rudder. Also, yesterday I sanded down my vertical stabilizer and uh, buffed it out to see if I could get rid of the orange peel. And it looks absolutely amazing. So. I'm going to take the rudder today and show you how I sand it and buff it to eliminate some of the orange peel. First, let me see if I can get the camera um, and show you what the orange peel looks like on this rudder. I know it doesn't look that bad in the camera when I show it to you, and actually it's not all that bad. The orange peel isn't, isn't really bad on here at all. In fact, some of the people I showed it to, one guy was actually a professional painter, thought it looked pretty good. <laughs> So I think maybe my standards are just too high and I really want that show car finish, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of work on here and smooth it out a little bit. Now I've already done this side and it comes out really nice. I didn't eliminate the orange peel 100%. And the reason why is, you know, when I painted this, I never planned on sanding this down. So there's only really two thin coats of, of blue paint on here. And I'm just afraid to sand too much and, um, you know, burn through the paint. And then once that happens, now I'm screwed. I kind of have to paint it again. So the other side here that I did looks really, really good. Um, this side doesn't look too bad, but like I said, I'm going to try to sand this one too and just eliminate most of that orange peel. All right, the first step I'm doing here is I'm using a sanding block like this that I bought at the local paint shop. You can use a piece of wood or whatever you want. And I am starting with a piece of 1500 sandpaper. I do have 1200, but this orange peel isn't too bad on here, so I'm just gonna start with 1500. I also have a spray bottle here I bought at Home Depot. This is just water and Dawn dish soap. So first thing is we just wanna get it wet. Obviously this sandpaper has been soaking in water. And here's a little trick to your sandpaper too. You have to soak this sandpaper for about 10 minutes or so before you use it. If you just dip it in the water and get it wet, every time you bend it you'll, you can get cracks and sharp edges along the corner. So you really have to make sure it's well soaked before you use it. Um, other than that, I found that I just kind of go back and forth and obviously I'm not going over the rivets. You don't want to sand over a rivet. So one of the things I wanted to mention is that this paint I'm using is a single stage Nason paint made by DuPont. That means it's not a base coat clear coat. It's just a base and clear in, in one step. Now if you're sanding a clear coat, usually there's two or three coats of clear on there and you're pretty much just sanding the clear. You never get into the color. Well obviously on here, um, you're sanding the color right away. So as you can see, I have white on the end of this. And you have to be very careful because if I, I'm gonna wind up taping this off later, you'll see, but if I would sand into this or when I use the buffer, if I would buff that blue paint over the white, you're never going to get that, that blue out of the white. Um, so you have to be kind of careful there. So. so this is what it looks like after sanding it with the 1500 grit paper. As you can see, I don't sand around the rivets or in between them. And uh, when this all gets buffed out, you'll never even know that, that I didn't. Um, so I'm just looking at this and I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm actually gonna go down to 1200 grit paper. I think I can go a little bit more aggressive on here. So this is 1500 right now. The next step I'm gonna do is 1200. Then I'll go back again with a 1500 and then I have 2000, 3000 and 5000. So I'll use all those different papers on here. And then after I get done sanding it up to 5000, um, I will buff it out with a 3M product that I'm going to show you in just a minute. Here's what it looks like after sanding it with 2000 grit. So I did the, the 1500 first, then I went to 1200, 
then it went back to the 1500 and then 2000. Um, and the reason you keep going up is basically the higher the number of the sandpaper, obviously, the finer it is. And it basically just keeps removing the scratches from the previous step. So now you can see the orange peel is all gone. It's just a nice, flat, dull surface. All right, so for the next step, I'm using 3,000 and 5,000 grit. Now these things are called Trizact. And I'm gonna have a link in the description box to all these products on Amazon. I bought all these on Amazon. This is a 3,000, this is a 5,000. And this is a little bit different. It's not just sandpaper, it's like a little foam pad. Um, so I don't use a sanding block on here, I just kinda of put it on my hand and use it like that. All right, so I'm starting out with a 3,000. I'm gonna soak it in my bucket of water just to get it uh, good and wet. Then I'll take my spray bottle of soapy water and spray this all down. The soapy water just kind of helps the sandpaper glide over the surface and I guess carry away any little bit of grit that's in there or the paint. So we'll get that good and wet. And that's it, we just uh, start sanding. And I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on here, just kind of letting the sandpaper do its work. I'm being real careful to go around the rivets. And I don't know if it matters or not, but I try to go in one direction instead of going in circles. Um, so like I'm doing 3,000 this way, and then with the 5,000 I'll go the opposite way. That's just kind of how I'm doing it. Hopefully that kind of helps remove the, the scratches from the 3,000. But this actually works really nice. These are good products to use. They work nice and uh, they do a, a really nice job. I can't wait to show you what it looks like when it's done. I already have the vertical stabilizer done on the other side of this rudder done. Although I guess just seeing it on the video doesn't really give you a good appreciation because you can't really get a good shot of the surface. So I will finish this with the 3,000 and 5,000 and it's time to buff it out. When you're done with the 3,000 and 5,000, just take a, a rag with some clean water and wipe it off really good. And then before the next step, you wanna make sure it's completely dry. All right, this is what it looks like after the 5,000 grit sanding. So the sanding part is all done and it's looking really good. Obviously it's dull, but it's really flat. There's no orange peel. And another advantage of doing this is if you have any dust in the paint, well, that's completely gone. All right, now after you are done sanding with your 12, 15, 2,000, 3,000, and 5,000 grit sandpaper, Next, it's time to buff and polish it. And here's the equipment you're going to need. And guys, I'm, I'm telling you in my uh, unexpert opinion, get this product because I have tried different um, rubbing compounds and polishers and it really just didn't work well at all. Um, so this is from 3M. These are about $90 a bottle if you go to Amazon, which is a complete ripoff. Go to the link that I have in the description box because I bought all three bottles, plus it gives you three different pads. Um, I think it was $140. So it is expensive still, but man, does this stuff work really, really nice. What you have here, the black bottle, is a um, kind of like a cutting compound. No, actually, take that back. The white one is the, the, the cutting compound. Um, and what it does is it removes all the scratches from the uh, sandpaper and it has its its pad it's a matching pad it's white and then you have the black stuff after that which basically takes out the swirl marks left by this and it has its own matching black pad it's kind of color coded for dummies then you have the blue stuff which is a polish it obviously has a blue pad um, and that's the final step now after all this is done you can use whatever wax you want and just wax the surface to, to help protect it um, Oh, you also need a, uh, a buffer. 
This is a cheap one. It's I think I bought it eighty. It was eighty nine dollars at like the local car place. You can get good ones up to two or three hundred dollars. And if you look closely at them, they're all exactly the same. They even have the same exact lines and moldings. So they're all made by the same company. It's just you know Dewalt puts their name on it and charges you double for it. So this is kind of like a a no name brand. It was eighty nine bucks to car shop. But you want to make sure you get one that has a slow start, which means when you pull the trigger, it doesn't just automatically go to full speed. Um, this one is a variable speed. There's a little wheel right here that you can dial in the speed. And one is the lowest setting, and honestly, I've never taken it off one. So the, the lowest setting is what I use. And like I said, when you pull the trigger, it, it gradually goes into full speed. It's, it starts off slow. Um, so that's it. First one is here. Let's get the polishing. Hey guys, let me just also say that as you're using this product, you want to keep everything separate, meaning you don't want to have any of this on there or on your surface while you're trying to use this or this. So if you'll notice, I have, you know, obviously that's why they give you the three different pads. And then um, I also have a rag for each one because after I do this one, for example, um, I wipe it all off with this rag. So none of these ever get cross contaminated. But like I was saying earlier, I don't want to have that buffing wheel go from the blue to the white because I, I'm pretty sure, maybe not, but I'm pretty sure that that would kind of stain the white. So I'm going to tape this off right on my line. I'll make a double layer. And guys, if you've ever used a buffer before, and this is the first time I'm using one, this stuff slings, slings this, this uh, liquid all over the place. In fact, you can see my shirt. It's just, it's all over my floor. It's kind of everywhere. Sometimes I can get it to when I start off. It doesn't fling out, but not every time. So anyway, I'm going to tape off all of this white because I don't want any of that compound going on the white part. All right, I have my first pad on here. And what I do is I just put, I just put a couple dots along the outside like that. All right, here we go. I wish I had a higher tripod so like you could look down on the surface, but maybe that's the next thing I'll get from my YouTube channel is a new tripod. So here's something I want to mention. You can see this turns clockwise like that. When you're on an edge of a surface, you always want the pad going off the surface. So if I'm on this side, I'm, I'm leaning the, the buffer this way so that it's going that way. If I leaned it this way, then it's coming in at it and can really take off the paint on the edge. Same with the trailing edge here. I want to use this side so it's going off the trailing edge. Oh, and also for the rivets, if you're wondering, here's what I've noticed. With this pad or this rubbing compound, you can go over the rivets, but if you do it too much, you will take the paint off. So what I do is I kind of quickly go over the rivets and I quickly try to go between the rivets to level everything out or even it all out. Um, so you just have to be careful. Uh, there are a couple spots on, I think, the vertical stabilizer where there's a little bit of paint that got uh, removed from from like the very top of the rivet Here's what it looks like after the first uh, Application here, this is just extra material. I'm going to wipe off with my rag So this is a designated rag I have for for this rubbing compound and what I do is I just kind of Wipe the residue off. 
and after it's off, it'll kind of let me see if I need to, to go back and do it again or, or what. Most of the time I don't. I seem to get it well enough the first time. Here it is after I've wiped off the residue. It's already looking really good. Um, it probably won't show in the camera, but there's some swirl marks in there, and that's normal. That's the, uh, the next step on the polishing will remove those swirl marks. So I'm switching out to the next pad, and what I do is I just lay it on here, and you want to get this centered. So I just go right from the top. And I got it perfectly centered. Now I'll just put some stuff on there and buff away. So guys, I'm gonna use a new rag here, but one of the things I wanted to maybe give you a little tip, when you buy these, where the heck is it? See how they got this uh, tag on here? Well, you use these, these um, rags because they're nice and smooth, they won't scratch the surface, but if you happen to run this tag over the surface, you're gonna scratch it. So, I like to cut off those tags. All right, that was the second step Look at this finish. Absolutely beautiful. No orange peel. I mean, it really looks nice. Now the next step, the last step of this 3M process is um, just a polish. So it'll polish this up even nicer. All right, this is the blue pad, the third and final step in the process here. Alright, let's wipe off this polish and other than a coat of regular car wax, it'll be all done. Alright guys, what do you think? I think it looks amazing. I don't know if it's the camera really does it justice, but I guess looking in just the light reflection, you can see how sharp it is. I mean, the, the surface is just almost flawless. It really, really looks nice. And this whole thing, I don't even know how long it took me to do, maybe an hour. And that was with moving the camera around and filming, so it doesn't really take that much time to do. And if you guys think I'm some kind of expert or a pro, I'm really not. This is something that any of you guys can do. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope it helped you, gave you some tips. Here's what it looks like with the Blue Angels Vinyl Graphics logo. Please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you again on the next video.